just the right partner to help me shake up Washington, D.C. Governor Sarah. <laughs> Governor Sarah Palin of the great state of Alaska. I'm very proud to have introduced our next vice president to the country, but I can't wait until I introduce her to Washington. <laughs> Let me just offer an advance warning to the old big spending, do nothing, me first, country second crowd, change is coming. <laughs> My fellow Americans, when I'm president, we're going to embark on the most ambitious national project in decades. We're going to stop sending $700 billion a year to countries that don't like us very much, and some of that money... We'll attack the problem on every front. We'll produce more energy at home. We will drill new wells offshore, and we'll drill them now. We'll drill them now. I hate war. It's terrible beyond imagination. I'm running for president to keep the country I love safe and prevent other families from risking their loved ones in war as my family has. I will draw on all my experience with the world and its leaders and all the tools at our disposal, diplomatic, economic, military, and the power of our ideals to build the foundations for a stable and enduring peace. Long ago, something unusual happened to me that taught me the most valuable lesson of my life. I was blessed by misfortune. I mean that sincerely. I was blessed because I served in the company of heroes and I witnessed a thousand acts of courage and compassion and love. On an October morning in the Gulf of Tonkin, I prepared for my 23rd mission over North Vietnam. I hadn't any worry I wouldn't come back safe and sound. I thought I was tougher than anyone I was pretty independent then, too. I liked to bend a few rules and pick a few fights for the fun of it. But I did it for my own pleasure, my own pride. I didn't think there was a cause that was more important than me. Then I found myself falling toward the middle of a small lake in the city of Hanoi with two broken arms, a broken leg, and an angry crowd waiting to greet me. I was dumped in a dark cell and left to die. I didn't feel so tough anymore. When they discovered my father was an admiral, they took me to a hospital. They couldn't set my bones property, properly, so they just slapped a cast on me. And when I didn't get better, and was down to about 100 pounds, they put me in a cell with two other Americans. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even feed myself. They did it for me. I was beginning to learn the limits of my selfish independence. Those men saved my life. I... I was in solitary confinement when my captors offered to release me. I knew why. If I went home, they would use it as propaganda to demoralize my fellow prisoners. Our code said we could only go home in the order of our capture, 
and there were men who had been shot down long before me. I thought about it, though. I wasn't in great shape, and I missed everything about America, but I turned it down. A lot of prisoners had it much worse. A lot of prisoners had it a lot worse than I did. I'd been mistreated before, but not as badly as many others. I always liked to strut a little after I'd been roughed up to show the other guys I was tough enough to take it. But after I turned down their offer, they worked me over harder than they ever had before, for a long time, and they broke me. When they brought me back to my cell, I was hurt and ashamed, and I didn't know how I could face my fellow prisoners. The good man in the cell next door to me, my friend Bob Craner, saved me. Through taps on a wall, he told me I had fought as hard as I could. No man can always stand alone. And then he told me to get back up and fight again for my country and for the men I had the honor to serve with because every day they fought for me. I fell in love with my country when I was a prisoner in someone else's. I loved it, not just for the many comforts of life here. I loved it for its decency, for its faith, and the wisdom, justice, and goodness of its people. My country saved me. My country saved me, and I cannot forget it. And I will fight for her as long as I draw breath, so help me God. If you find faults with our country, make it a better one. If you're disappointed with the mistakes of government, join its ranks and work to correct them. Enlist, enlist in our armed forces, become a teacher, enter the ministry, run for public office, feed a hungry child, teach an, adult, an illiterate adult to read, comfort the afflicted, defend the rights of the oppressed. Our country will be the better, and you will be the happier, because nothing brings greater happiness in life than to serve a cause greater than yourself. I'm going to fight for my cause every day as your president. I'm going to fight to make sure every American has every reason to thank God as I thank him, that I'm an American, a proud citizen of the greatest country on earth. And with hard work, with hard work, strong faith, and a little courage, great things are always within our reach. Fight with me, fight with me. Fight for what's right for our country. Fight for the ideals and character of a free people. Fight for our children's future. Fight for justice and opportunity for all. Stand up to defend our country from its enemies. Stand up for each other. A beautiful, blessed, bountiful America. We're Americans, and we never give up. We never quit. We never hide from history. We make history. Thank you, and God bless you, and God bless America.